we will call to order the uh, Tuesday, May 11th meeting of the Birmingham Parks and Recreation Board. We have a roll call, please. Yep, Heather Carmona, make sure you say city and state, please. Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Susan Collins. Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Pam Graham. Ross Kaplan. Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Thank you, Ellie Noble. Dominic Police. Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Thank you, John Rushi. Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Ann Lip. Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Thank you. Oh, I gotta do the students, sorry. RJ Carroll. Um, RJ and Ellie, I'm just letting in right now. They're in. Pam's in too, I just let them in. Okay, okay. Um, RJ Carroll. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Birmingham, Michigan, correct? Yeah, sorry. That's okay. L Allie Chapnick? Present, Birmingham, Michigan. Great, Kyle Sayers. President, Birmingham, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. I think um, LA2 is in. LA Noble, um, Connie. And Pam. Yeah. Birmingham, Michigan. Okay. Thanks, LA. Pam, and Pam Graham, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. All right. We will move on then for the approval of the minutes uh, for Tuesday, October 6th. You mean Tuesday, April 6th, right? Excuse me, April. What did I say? You said October. I said October. I mean, I'm looking right at it. I have a few comments or potential okay. edits, I guess. John, go ahead. Um, let's see. On page two, the third paragraph down, um, it says 13 alternates were part of this request for proposals, including deducts and additions. Extent, the part that I don't quite understand is extensive so as to allow for flexibility. I don't quite. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. Understand that. Yeah. I've okay. Same comment. Yeah. And as, as long as you're looking that up, then the next sentence the studio ice arena portion of the project would not occur to, to the ice surface. To the ice surface, but the addition of the coverage. Okay. I, I, recall, put that. I recall a bit more of a discussion there. Actually, I asked Mr. Stempian, and I kind of wish it would say something like, you know, start with not occur, comma, but the upgraded compressors will be in place. So this ice improvement could take place in the future with minimal cost penalty, extending the season to year round. I remember having that conversation. I don't remember if, it's if it was exactly at this part of the meeting, but I remember that we, I, I did try to clarify that with Robert that what would happen, let's assume we could find the money at some point in the future, what would it cost to do this? Okay, I'll review that, John. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh huh. And then, well, this is a, a nitpick, but I think down in the next or the and lip paragraph, mm -hmm. permafrost, I think permafrost is one word, I think. But I, I'm not positive of that. And I think those are my only comments. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, Dominic. Uh, same page in the paragraph beginning with my name. Sorry, dropped back on the mute. I apologize. Uh, same page, paragraph being the, Dominic also voiced his concern. Uh, I think my, my comments were concerned on not moving forward with the upgrades of the studio ice surface. So maybe just the word studio is missing there. That's, that's all. Thank you. Okay. And any other comments from members of the board? Okay. Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the April 6th meeting? 
I move that we approve the minutes. Thanks, John. Do we have a second? This is Dominic. I'll second. Thanks, okay, and I'll do a roll call. Heather Carmona? Yes. Susan Collins? Yes. Pam Graham? Yes. Ross Kaplan? Yes. Ellie Noble? Yes. Dominic Police? Yes. John Rushi? Yes. Ann Lip? Yes. Sorry, I didn't know I was on. That's okay. Right. Okay, great. We will, <clears throat> excuse me, move on to uh, agenda, agenda item number four. Uh, we do not have any uh, uh, motions or items for a vote this evening or for approval, though we did, I think, Lauren, did you want to add it here? It would add to go under communication. Um, and if the trail committee had a report, just give a verbal or if they have a, a written report. No, that's put it at the I, Yeah. If Ross and Pam would like to do a verbal of the trail subcommittee or the kickoff meeting, we can make that number 13. Um, I didn't want to put them on the spot though, but we forgot to put that on the agenda. Ross or Pam, is that a go? Sure. Okay. So we need to make an amendment to the yep. agenda to add the trail subcommittee update as item number 13 under communication discussion items. Right. And verbal, verbal, of course. Right. All right. We will move on to the uh, items, first item of under communication. Um, which is the um, pickleball sites, a discussion and, and a lot of extensive background information that was provided by staff. Thank you very much. And um, Lauren or Carrie, you're going to introduce this. And we're going to talk a little bit about the current um, public input that is happening right now. Yes, Heather, I'll, um, I'll be presenting this item tonight. Can everyone see my the screen? Yep, Just sure. say pickleball public input? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, yes, we are hoping to engage the public this evening and over the course of the next month or so. Um, I'll, I'll just back up real quick for those of you that don't know. What in the world is pickleball? It's kind of a combination of tennis, badminton, and table tennis. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It um, kind of combines the same size court of a, of a badminton with paddles from ping pong. And um, so it is considered a paddle sport, not a racket sport, but it has a lot of the same rules as tennis. And people really love it. Um, it is one of the fastest growing sports in the United States. And it has been on our radar for quite some time. Um, we uh, heard a lot about it during our five-year Parks and Recreation Master Plan planning process back in 2017, 2018. Um, so we started really um, hearing how much, you know, it was desired in the city of Birmingham, so much so that we did include it in our capital project schedule in the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. And, um, and in November, the bond was passed where we had um, earmarked some money to go ahead and move forward with pickleball should, should funding become available. So um, we're ready to, uh, we're excited to move forward with this project. Um, and the purpose of tonight is to hear from the public, hear from the board on um, some potential locations for pickleball. I'd like to take this opportunity to promote our new um, public engagement platform, Engage Birmingham, which you can find right on the front page of our website, um, or you can go direct to engage.bhamgov.org. It takes you right there. You just have to register um, and then you can complete the survey. Survey is open until the end of this month. Um, so we would encourage everyone to participate in that survey. So like I, I mentioned, um, we do have five locations that um, 
that are potential locations that we'd like to present this evening. These are the same locations also in the survey on Engage Birmingham. Um, the locations include Crestview Park, Lincoln Eaton Corner, which is Kenning Park, Poppleton Park, St. James Park, and West Lincoln Well Park. We're going to talk about um, exploring options for new or whether or not we should convert existing tennis courts to pickleball. Um, and and there, other locations are not out of the question. So if you feel strongly about other locations that we haven't included as part of the potential list, then please um, let us know about that. We want to hear. Um, but staff did review all of our parks in our in our park system, and um, you know looked at the park system as a whole, looked at spacing requirements needed other programmed activity that happens in the parks and the proximity to other parks. Should we do a conversion of a tennis court? You know, are there um, available courts nearby for tennis? Also, what is the, um, what has been the nature of the park in the past? Is it active or more passive? And then other items as well that kind of staff knows internally that may not be evident or obvious to the public. Um, other considerations for pickleball include parking, very important. Um, you know, I forgot to mention earlier that we, we um, partnered with Next one summer in 2018. We had pickleball available indoors at the ice arena during the summer months. And um, we were able to offer ladder leagues with Next, and um, that was that was a really good hit. So if we do want to um, partner again with Next or the Y, and we need at least six to eight courts to be able to offer a ladder league. Now, if there's four people on a court, that can really add up quickly for, you know, could be a burden uh, on the neighborhoods potentially for parking. So um, it's important that we consider parking. Ladder leagues, like I mentioned, we'll need at least six to eight courts if we want to be able to offer that. Um, ADA requirements are very important, of course. We'll, we'll need a sidewalk up to and surrounding the, the courts, whether or not they're new or existing. Um, and then pickleball tends to attract spectators. So it'd be nice if we were able to um, find Space for tables, seating. Um, it'd be helpful if there was a restroom available as well. The proximity to nearby residences. That is going to be something that we definitely want to keep in mind. Um, the sound from a paddle hitting a ball is it's different. It's just a, a very unique sound that pickleball comes with. Um, and then tennis players. If uh, it, you know, the conversion of a tennis court over to pickleball will displace some of, you know, your favorite places to play tennis, potentially. And then also if we have pickleball right next to tennis, that we're going to want to consider screening. And uh, because there's a lot of activity, more so than tennis, it's, it can be distracting out of your peripheral vision, you know, for your tennis player. So screening would be important in that situation. Um, other current park activity. And then like we keep talking about here, new versus converting an existing tennis court. So um, when we're looking at the size and the spacing required, pretty much one tennis court can be converted to four pickleball courts. Um, so the minimum size for recreational play or drop and play is 30 by 60 feet. Um, if you're doing new construction, then the recommendation is to build them a little bit bigger so that you can accommodate for the ADA requirements. More competitive play, too, will require a little bit bigger courts. So this, this screen here shows um, the three types of, over on the um, left-hand side here, uh, different configurations of pavement that accommodate two tennis courts in this space. Um, we have variants of all of these in the city, um, but the most important thing right here, this shows one tennis court, 60 by 120, that is one tennis court. So two of these can fit in, either, in any of these configurations. 
And this is just a larger blow up of uh, the tennis court outlined with the four pickleball courts here. Here's another way to look at it, the green being the tennis court. These gray lines here are the white markings on the tennis court. And it just shows you how you can lay out four pickleball courts on top of one tennis court. So starting with Crestview, I've outlined the area 60 by 120, that would give us the four pickleball courts. And a very smart college student helped me to um, superimpose this, these four <laughs> pickleball courts on top of it. So you can see that uh, we're able at Crestview to accommodate new, at least four, um, potentially six in this space. Uh, we might, you know, there, there is a tree that would be affected, uh, but it is a nice large area that could potentially accommodate between four and six courts. The other option would be to convert the existing courts to pickleball. And um, this is our largest space tennis court is the 120 by 120. So it will easily accommodate the eight pickleball courts. For Crestview, some considerations that we need to look at. There is on-street parking only. We will need to um, accommodate for ADA and include additional sidewalk. Uh, we do have a portable restroom available currently at this site. There would be minimal disruption for residents. Um, and we do have open space for soccer, tennis, and playground current at the park. Um, some, as we're looking at conversion of the tennis court, we did have crack repair done to this tennis court back in 2012. It is in the queue for upcoming um, work for repair and painting. Now, um, Crestview had 215 reservations in 2020 out of 2000 which equates to, it's our um, fourth most reserved. So it's right dead center in the middle. Of the seven different locations, it um, is reserved, you know, middle, mid-range. Moving on to Lincoln Eaton Corner, unless, any, unless we want to pause here for a moment for questions about Crestview, or do you want me to just continue? Does anybody have any questions? John? It's not necessarily limited to Crestview, but I just have a couple of questions that might help us as we go forward. Um, you mentioned eight, six to eight courts needed for a ladder league. Does that mean six to eight at one place, or is it conceivable that there could be four courts at one place and four courts at another place and still do the ladder league thing? My understanding is they should all be in one place, John, okay. so that you, you kind of rotate. Um, sure. It's a, uh, yeah. Okay. So if we wanted to accommodate that, our, our goal needs to be to look out for work and we put eight courts, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, six, six to eight, yes. Right. And then um, we have $150,000 budgeted for pickleball in the bond budget. How many courts does 150,000 buy? We estimated new courts, which would account, would be between six and eight courts. Pardon? We originally anticipated building new courts, which includes between six and eight in I that 150,000. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. That's all I have. Susan? Um, Carrie, I just have a question about, um, you said they're the fourth ranked of number of tennis reservations. Are mm -hmm. all the tennis locations two courts or some one court? All of them are two except for Kenning, which Kenning has four. Kenning Park is our highest reserved park. Okay. And a lot of that has to do with the racket club being right there in our agreement with the racket club. Okay, great. For information. Mm -hmm. Ross? I just have 
Um, just to, uh, I guess, be cautious of those numbers of reserve. I, I play tennis quite a bit, and I would say it's probably 25 or 30 percent, if that, that actually reserve. I think it's people are understanding it. It's getting better, but uh, I think you have to be very cautious of those numbers. Uh, very good that, point. Yeah, and does that include the tennis instruction, or is that just Birmingham residents reserving? That includes everything that requires a reservation, which I do believe includes instructors. That is correct. Yep. Okay, I think we're good. You want to move on? Oh, Pammy has her hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry, Pam. Yeah, I just have a question about whether we consider the conversion of existing courts to be a permanent conversion. I've seen some play courts where it seems that, I don't know, through setup of the users or through staff, they switch between pickleball and tennis. I mean, they have, like, you know, things for the different nets. Do we consider it to keep that flexibility or... Is there down, is that, I don't know. I've seen courts where it looks like you could play either or configure them either way. No, we did not. Um, we did not uh, account for that type of um, arrangement with this presentation. I suppose it would be a possibility. However, that um, um, we, we did years ago, we taped off at West Lincoln. We had a tennis court and pickleball court um, within the tennis court area. Um, it was it was not a good, um, it just didn't go off very well because the, there was so many lines. It was kind of confusing for the tennis players. It was distracting. It didn't blend well. Um, I'm not sure how, uh, because what we're talking about in conversion is painting the lines. So I really don't know how you could have both tennis and pickleball unless you lined for both and you would have to have portable nets then. And they call it like shared use, dedicated use versus shared use. And they okay. paint both on the court. That's something we'd have to explore more. Thanks. Sure. Okay, so um, next location for potential pickleball would be uh, Lincoln and Eaton Corner, which is Kenning Park. And in this picture, you can see the tennis courts across the street. So we're talking about right at the corner of Lincoln and Eaton, um, which could accommodate four and probably six. A couple pictures. We may have a tree or two that would be affected by building courts here. But other than that, it's pretty much open, open space. There is a sculpture at the corner. Um, this has been updated since you received your agenda. It was the number two pick on Engage Birmingham survey, but um, it is now th the number one pick so far. Um, some considerations, it is on street parking, but there is available parking across the street. We would probably add a new pedestrian crosswalk. Um, the ADA requirements are gonna be the same pretty much for all of these locations. We wanna make sure we look at that. Uh, restrooms nearby at the ice arena, very minimal disruption for residents. It's near the sports complex. So we've got a lot of, um, we had a lot of comments on our survey on Engage Birmingham that it seems appropriate for uh, location here. Um, and it would be a new court. Moving on to Poppleton, the reason we chose this location uh, right next to the tennis courts as far as new is because of the parking situation and the parking is right here between the ball fields and the tennis courts. If we were going to pick a different place at Poppleton Park, um, it would probably cost a lot more than the 150 that we had originally thought of. So if we want to explore a different location within Poppleton Park for new courts, um, then we could do that. But we just, um, we wanted to get some feedback before we pursue that because um, 
you know, the only other spot at Poppleton would be behind the ball field. So you'd have to pave in a way for parking, a pathway. It would be a lot of extra costs. So when we're looking at Poppleton, we're, we went here with the new courts just to see there is spacing, um, but it would involve, you know, some tree removals. Um, it's, it's probably not the best location for new courts in that area. However, it could be a good location for converting the tennis courts over to pickleball because of the appropriate parking. There's sidewalks up to the courts already. Um, and the current park activity does have softball. There is a playground um, and some other considerations. You know, with like I mentioned before, the new court there next to the residences um, could be an issue. Um, the courts are in good condition. They were recently painted in 2020 for tennis, though. So um, we did you know, we, we would have to repaint them for pickleball, which would be a, a little bit extra cost. And it looks like we do have some questions. We can pause here now, if you're ready. Dominic, I think you had your hand up first. Yeah, a lot of good options on the table. I guess I, I just wanted to calibrate myself, and maybe you said this earlier and I missed it. Are we going through this with the intent of finding a, a, a recommendation, or are we just going through this as information? We are going through this as information on five potential locations that staff had come up with, but we do want to gather input this evening from the board, from the public, and we would later return with a recommendation. So these were just um, five potential spots. I, I hope that's helpful. I, okay, so you're essentially you're just collecting our thoughts on each of the alternatives. But at the conclusion of today's meeting, or this section of today's meeting, we're not intending to narrow it down or, or choose one amongst the, the others. No, not necessarily. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. These were the locations that were on Engage Birmingham too, but people could offer others if they wanted, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yes. Susan, you had a question? Yeah. Um, I did want to confirm one thing, too. Um, Carrie, I assume these will be enclosed like the tennis courts are with the fence around them? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think you answered one of my questions. That one in um, Poppleton Park just seems awfully close and crowded. Um, I guess one of my questions is, how is that neighborhood going to feel about Poppleton Park? And um, if you use existing, it seems like the houses are a little bit further away, but... Um, that's when it just seems to me like the neighborhood, it just seems pretty tight there and loud and wondering if anyone's weighed in on that at this point. No, we haven't heard that yet, Susan, but we haven't really explored these in detail. Our okay. survey only um, lists the parks. And so um, when Poppleton was number one, as shown in your agenda, you know, people don't really know where it, and so um, yeah. we're hoping to, you know, we'll have this out there now. We can add to the survey. We just, we're, we're gathering feedback now. That's the purpose of tonight. We're talking about it out loud now. Okay. And I, I know you have it down further, but do you have um, right there the number of reservations at Poppleton? And I do realize that they're minimal compared to how many are playing there. I'm just kind of curious if we have an idea on that for Poppleton, for tennis. So Poppleton, um, oops. Poppleton is the second least reserved of all courts. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. And I'm going to show at the very end all of the reservations in the tennis yeah. courts. Thank you. So, um, go ahead. Oh, we have some other questions. We can. Are you still? Are you? Have you finished, Carrie? Hold on, everybody. You were still talking, Gary. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. The last thing I was going to say is Poppleton was number one pick. It is now number three as of four o'clock today. Okay. Thank you. We're in real time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. John, if you can hold one second. Anne had her hand up, then Dominic, uh, and then you're next. Heather? Yeah. May I just offer a suggestion? Can we get through the little uh, PowerPoint? Because this is all informational tonight. 
And if, if, if everyone could bear with us a little bit, um, this is the first intro of this, uh, of this project that, that we're undertaking and really just going to go over a few things with you and then we can answer questions after if that's okay with the chair. That's fine with me. Yeah, some of the questions are in the PowerPoint. I've noticed. Yeah, they're getting answered. Okay. Okay, moving on. Move on. Mm -hmm. All right, so we covered the reservations and moving on to St. James. So we looked at two different potential locations for new courts at St. James, A and B. And these kind of show the, the courts there. There would be a little bit more room here if we chose to go south of the existing tennis courts. We could probably add eight at the, in this location. But it's kind of an odd spot, and it would require a lot of sidewalk also from the parking lot to get to that spot and the removal of a beautiful tree. Um, here's some pictures of the existing tennis courts. And also, um, it's important to note that the Y does reserve this park, often sets up a large canopy in this grassy area here. Um, and the condos are very close to that space as well. It would be a potential conversion area of a tennis existing court. And so some considerations for St. James. What's great is there is an on-site parking lot. Um, we also have to add the sidewalk, portable toilet available. It is a pretty busy park with the Y, softball, Little League, you know, there's a playground. Um, so it's very active. And um, the, if we're going to take a closer look at conversion of this court, we did have crack repair done in 2019. We need to do more crack repair or we need to look at a better, we need to re look into the ground conditions here bef before we proceed. We're, there's something going on. It should last a lot longer than a couple years when you do the crack repair. So um, there is more to look into here. Um, St. James is our third most reserved court for tennis. And as of four o'clock today, it is number two pick on Engage Birmingham. The last site that we have as a consideration is West Lincoln Well. Um, new courts, not a lot of room up to four, maybe. Um, there's, there's a lot of trees. It's a nice grassy area. It might affect some of the trees. There's only a bench um, as far as furnishings. Uh, and then of course the other option would be to convert the courts, which could accommodate between six and eight courts. This is one of the smaller um, pavement markings, but it, but it isn't that difficult to accommodate uh, more room for up to eight courts. It is a gravel loop drive with limited parking, so we'd have to improve the parking area um, and include a sidewalk. Just the playground there now with the courts. And again, this is very close to residents, um, so screening definitely needed. This court is in excellent condition. Um, so it would be, it is next up for painting. So if we were to convert it to pickleball, it'd be a fairly easy task. And there are nearby courts at Seaholm, not maintained by the city. They're not owned by the city, I should say. They are the schools. Um, it is the fourth, or, or it falls, um, let's see. I'm sorry, I must misspoke earlier. I think I said Crestview was the fourth most reserved court. It's actually the fifth, and West Lincoln is the fourth. And this chart shows exactly what's what. <laughs> 16 tennis courts in the city, seven different locations. We've got four at Kenning. All of the other locations have two. So we do have quite a few courts for a city of this size. 
Now, if you want to take out the four at Kenning and say, well, you know, people can't play there because they're reserved all the time by the racket club, that still gives us 12 courts, which is over the average for um, a city and tennis courts and being able to offer what's recommended by National Parks and Recreation Association. So um, reservations, Kenning Park is number one. Second is court and tennis courts, and then St. James and down the line. And with that, I can open it up for um, questions. I think Dominic, you were in the queue, or maybe Anne, can't remember. Yeah, I think it was you, Anne. Go ahead, Anne. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, I checked out that engage the, the engage software. That's really cool. I didn't vote because I don't play pickleball. I didn't want to skew, skew the results. Um, but can you give us like the raw numbers? Like how close are the votes between one, two, and three? Are they are they neck and neck? They are neck and neck. Okay. They are. I want to say it's um, uh, so one is your favorite, right? And five is your least. And so um, top three it was Lincoln. Eaton Corner at 2.75, I think. And then St. James was right behind it at 2.8. Um, and they were they were very, very close. How many so, people have voted so far? So we've had 56 okay. fill out the survey. So. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess as we're going through, one of the things that kept coming to my mind is the splash pad. Right. It would seem like we would go through a very similar exercise with very similar size and uh, space and, you know, amenity considerations for potential locations for a future splash pad. So mm -hmm. um, just something to keep in the back of our minds, right, that we may at some point want to have the conversation about pickleball and splash pad together, right, so that uh, we can make more of a holistic assessment of, of all the facilities and make the best determination for the residents. Um, Ellie, can you still have your hand up? Sorry, my screen. Yeah, is. hi. Um, I was going to ask how many people voted, so I'm glad that was covered. Um, you're talking about the uh, pickleball having a negative effect in neighborhoods, and I think I'd like to bring up that it's a positive effect in neighborhoods as well that if it, if it becomes in your neighborhood, that means you can walk to it. And to me, that is a great, great thing. Um, which brings me to another idea, which doesn't sound like it might be done, but um, because of the ladder league idea that you need all of the courts in one spot, I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice to sprinkle them throughout our neighborhoods rather than all of them I mean, I kind of like Kenning. If you're going to put them all in one spot, I think Kenning's a great spot. But if you could sprinkle them around neighborhoods, like, you know, two courts or four, two courts in each, like there are, you know, like the court in Lake Tennis is only, what, two courts? And they're the biggest uh, reservation. So anyway, that's just my two cents. Thanks. Good feedback. Thanks, Ellie. Uh, John? So unlike Ann, I was enthused about the Engage Birmingham, and so I jumped right on and I voted, even though I'm not a pickleball player. But then I changed my mind. Once I had all this information, I voted without information. So then I got this packet, and I want to change my mind. I went in, and I couldn't figure out how to change my mind. It seems like I'm locked in on my decision. Is that true? So I'll have to look into that. This is one of our first projects on Engage Birmingham. Right. And, um, you know, there it is possible to add on to a project. I do know that. Um, so I'll find out more and how we can, um, you know, maybe we can put something, don't like your vote, you know, vote here or, or something. But um, true. 
also, I would like to respond to Ellie. I definitely, I hope I didn't come across as negative. This is very exciting. We, we um, we're looking forward to adding it to our recreational inventory, of course. And we have had a lot of positive comments through the survey saying, I've picked this because it's closest to where I live and I can walk or bike. So very good point. Thanks for bringing that up. Lauren? And I, I just wanted to respond to John. Um, I think we purposely launched the Engage Birmingham, uh, and, and we were fortunate enough to have pickleball as the first uh, for our department. Um, we did that intentionally without much information and because it was to garner first impression from the residents and the people in the community. And so, so as people get more information, such as tonight, the purpose of tonight is, of course, um, to share um, the, the ideas that, that we have found um, from experience and research a little bit with the board and the public and then get that input tonight. Um, but we will definitely carry, as she mentioned, we'll be able to check a little bit and see if we could do a different, uh, different version or variation of, of a survey so, or a poll, if you will. So stay tuned uh, as we roll this out together. This is brand new for the city. So, um, but it's great. We're, in, we're charged up about it and excited for it. So. Thank you. John, did you have a new question? Or did yeah, just, just a small follow-up, but parking. Um, do we, street parking is acceptable, right? I mean, I know you pointed out in some cases there's a parking lot, but is there any reason why we wouldn't consider putting courts where people would have to park on the street to use them? Nope, just wanted to make you aware of that. It is a consideration. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, uh, Pam? Yeah, I just had a question about the environmental impact. Carrie, you mentioned like where you thought there might be trees that were at risk. And I was wondering about the paved surface. Are there like kind of permeable surfaces or draining or is there any worry that there would be flooding caused by adding more pavement to, to a park or is it just a concrete? What is your idea for surfaces? What's the standard? The standard for these types of courts are bituminous, which are the same as tennis courts for the most part. Um, they can be played on concrete surfaces or other hard surfaces, but we haven't really dug in deep to explore different types of surfaces. We planned on the normal, you know, tennis court type surface for this project. It's uh, possible that drain tile or drainage would have to be installed once we really, you know, narrow down what we're looking at, whether it's new or existing, and then um, we'll have to provide that information as it comes in. Thanks. Mm -hmm. okay, great. Any more comments from members of the board? I see somebody's hand from the public. Any comments from anyone joining us this evening from the public? David, nice to see you. You go ahead. Good evening, David Young on Clark Street. Uh, pr predictably enough, um, I'm not an advocate of converting telephone uh, uh, tennis courts. I think we should build new ones. I think just going by reservations only is not necessarily a true reflection of the demand for tennis. Uh, frequently we show up for reservations and there are people just playing there casually. So I think you need to look at the total demand rather than just the reservation demand. So I would advocate building new courts. Um, the, the other thing is next to the organization, they have a pickleball activity. And so I don't know whether there's been any consideration to the fact that they may well come on board as a demand for pickleball courts. Um, we just don't want them competing with tennis. So uh, I would advocate new, new, new pickleball courts, not conversion. Thank you. Thank you, David. Okay, any other comments from members of the board of the public? Okay, seeing none, none, we will move on. Thank you very much, Carrie. That was um, well-organized. 
um, presentation and thank questions you. were answered. So thank you so much. Okay, we will move on to the next item under communication. We have um, the fire station number two park designation request. Um, and I know there's a series of communications that have occurred since, I think this was, probably was our October meeting when um, a resident, Kate Bonjourno, had presented to our board um, the idea for um, a park there at Chesterfield. Um, so, Lauren, do you want to walk through these memos a little bit? Absolutely. Um, thank you. Um, so, Fire Station 2, uh, you're right. Uh, not only was it introduced to the park board last summer um, by um, um, Kate uh, Bongiorno, um, but also, too, it's been a little buzz in the community, too, by others over the last um, year or so uh, with regard to the um, master plan redo um, that they're working on, too, the 2040. And um, recently it came up, too, about possibly naming the park after a community member. Uh, so I put a report together um, because I wanted it to come to the park board or be referred to the park board by the city commission of which it was. Um, so I've included uh, my memo to uh, Mr. Marcus uh, that was on the part on the city commission agenda and they did in turn um, refer the matter to the parks board uh, for your review discussion and recommendation um, for designating a portion of the station, um, the fire station property as, um, as a, a park site um, and possibly the naming procedure. So you have uh, that my, my report, um, which also I included the donor policy as well. So you have that readily at your fingertips. Um, and we put some um, Cape Horn Journal and the petition is also included in that report for background information. And then also too, um, when it was in front of the city commission, um, there's commissioners that had some comments of which we also attached the draft minutes at the time that this was sent out to you, the minutes were still unapproved. Um, so those are also included in this document. Um, and then you have an email from Commissioner Hoff at the commission meeting. She did want to send us some um, concerns that she had or, or items of which she wanted uh, the administration and the park board to consider as we review this um, item. And then um, we have a memorandum from Fire Chief Paul Wells as well. Um, as well, um, for also considerations uh, as we review this item. Um, so actually it's just an introduction this evening to give you some material. Um, I think as we move forward with this, uh, staff will have to begin some research, um, evaluating um, you know, the, the property, of course, how much space we have, uh, what will it take um, to, to I guess to dedicate it or earmark it as a, a park. Um, it, as it, my report goes through, it is a, the fire station property is designated as, um, and the zoning is PP, public property. Um, that's the same designation that all their other parks have. So it would be no different. Um, this project, uh, since it was brought to the park board late, late last year, August, September, um, it was not considered uh, as part of the bond. Uh, allocation or the bond dollars um, for the 11 million uh, plus uh, bond uh, that was approved last year. Um, it also wasn't earmarked or, or uh, isolated as one of the park priority projects of which the park board spent a great deal of time on. Um, so that also, I just wanted to point that out to you as we consider um, this going forward. Um, so read through it throughout the minutes. Also give a little comments from some of the commissioners too of what to take into account of which staff is already um, aligning a lot of our review um, based on that and looking at some history with other parks and, and properties in town. So this will be an ongoing project uh, going forward. Um, we'll, we hope to keep the board updated um, intermittently um, at, at upcoming meetings with regard to the research on this. Um, and if you have any input or comments tonight, I'd be happy to take those. Great, thanks, Lauren. Any comments from any members of the board? I see a hand up. I don't see who's it is. Oh, John. Cool. Um, I, you know, I, 
I think this, the idea is wonderful and the way they've, um, you know, the concept of a park is, is interesting, but I find it difficult to overcome uh, the comments from Mr. Wells, the fire chief, and also from uh, Mrs. Ms. Hoff. Um, I just think that that, that location, if, if we were to do a park that had like a picnic tables and things that maybe would be suitable for adults, I think that that would be an interesting idea. But to have to encourage children to come to a park that's right on a busy street like Maple, I, I just don't think it's a great idea. In my opinion. Let's start. Go ahead, Susan. Um, I'm just going to reiterate what John said. I love the idea of in a park. It's right down the street from me. It is a very, very busy street, especially since Maple has been um, down to two lanes there. Um, so I think this, I think the um, city manager said it very well in his letter. It's a very busy park. So I like the idea, maybe some seats back there, but I'd be very concerned about kids playing out mm -hmm. there and a ball or something going over there. Uh, go ahead, Dominic. So I, I, uh, I'm in agreement with you know the, the concerns as stated in particular from the fire chief. Uh, question though is, should we, and maybe this is commingling topics, would it make at all sense to consider that location for pickleball? Um, perhaps as it skews age-wise, skews towards the, you know older. Uh, users uh, that could alleviate some of the the concerns with respect to young children and, and proximity to a busy road. I'm not sure, however, if it addresses the the considerations that the fire chief raised in regards to future expansion or fire hose, you know, drainage and training and things like that. Any other comments from anyone? I, just, I kind of will agree a little bit with John and Susan. Um, you know, I think the idea and the premise behind the neighborhood wanting to do something and activate that space should be commended. Um, um, but I do believe that there are a lot of options. And I think the flexibility too. one of the things, not only from safety, but I think that Chief Wells talked about too, you know, the idea, there's a concept of planning called, I think it's like lighter, quicker, cheaper, or something like that, where you can activate that space in a way that won't have an investment that, say, in a year, the fire hall does need to expand. The cost associated with, you know, maybe putting some pathways in, some benches, and a few trees to make it more of a respite area versus an actual park that encourages people to play, I think is maybe something that could be sort of a middle ground. So maybe that's something that we can consider too and how it's landscaped or designed, but doesn't have a play structure that encourages that type of activity. All right, any other comments? Seeing none, we will move on. Oops, I just lost my agenda. There we go. All right, the next item uh, I believe is a just brief report on a couple of the items that have been included in the capital improvement plan, Lauren. Do you want to talk yep. about what this means in terms of the budget, right? Yep, absolutely. Sorry. I, Sorry. Right. Can Sorry? I, I apologize for interrupting. Um, I, I was trying to raise my hand in response to one additional question with respect to the, uh, the uh, park proposal. Have we... Have we delivered what is expected of us as a, as a board? Uh, is there an action item in front of us or a recommendation we have to provide back to city council? Or I'm sorry, city commission? No, I'll answer that if I can, Heather. Yep, go ahead, Lauren. No, tonight, Dominic, this is your first introduction. Other than me mentioning in a previous meeting that I was going to bring this item before you, it's not on as an action item. It's, in fact, under com communication and discussion. I wanted to provide you the material I have received and and presented thus far um, to and from the commission to the park board. And we also heard your comments this evening. So staff will go back and do a little bit more due diligence and um, we'll return with some information. And um, maybe at that time, ask you for an opinion. 
Okay, thank you. Well, Lauren, on that note, just to piggyback on Simon's question, then at that point, would we, based on our discussion or any recommendations, would this be something that we would put on Engage Birmingham or would we want to do, I mean, just would we want to solicit input from the public on, on that as well? You know, I actually, um, we, Tiny and, and Carrie and I talked about that already because um, we have this great uh, forum um, at our fingertips. And as we're all navigating it and learning how to, the right way to use it with the help of our administration, um, actually, we did think of contemplate that, but I thought maybe we could research and know a little bit more as a board um, and as staff as to what our options and are and what is best suited um, for that site um, if you compare it to other parks and other activities whether passive or active um, and then I think then at that time we might be ready to put something out on um, Engage Birmingham but this would be ideal I mean if you know rather than working in a vacuum um, you know which we never do because we're online and we're public all the time but I think that would even give us another little avenue to um, just hear from others because you had the petition included in the packet not only last year but tonight um, from that neighborhood group and so let we need to spend a little time with it I think. Thank you. Um, Dominic you had another question and then Pam. So uh, yeah uh, I guess with that explanation as, as part of say a future bring back potentially um, it might be helpful Lauren to uh, help the board remember a few years back, we, we had a, an individual approach us with, re, with re, a proposal for a Japanese rock garden. Um, and I'm, I'm drawing a little bit of a blank as to the specific location. It was, it was in the Hawthorne or Aspen road area. Um, and it had to do with something similar, right? It was, it was approached, you know, a, a private, uh, a citizen approached us in regards to a, a private donation, right? And, uh, kind of, in a way, reshaping the purpose or the the activation of of the the facility. So, it might help if we could all remember that. I don't know if if we have any meeting minutes from from that experience that could help us learn from the experience and and if that if if it helps us like a lessons learned that we can apply to this conversation. It was Linden. It was Linden Park, wasn't it? It was before my time, but I remember hearing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a. They're, they're apples and oranges, but sure, Dominic, um, we could look back at that. Okay. Well, if they're apples and oranges in your assessment, then, then maybe it's a non-starter. I just thought if there was any crossover there, it might help us. No, sure. All right, Dominic. Thank you. Pam? Um, is there any action to uh, communicate with... Um, uh, the person, the citizen who brought the petition, Gordon Giano. Um, I just think we should be active, considered to be active, whether it's a contact from staff, from Lauren or the staff, or from the board, um, that this discussion would be part of the public record, of course, in the meeting, but just so she's aware of that. And I, there's just kind of nothing worse than, you know, giving your opinion and then nobody uses it or something. So it, it is she in contact with you, Lauren, or is it more appropriate to contact her as the board or how would you, what is your recommendation? Yeah, it's great. Um, great uh, idea. Um, actually, um, Heather and I, Heather brought that up earlier today with me and um, I've had um, subsequent conversations with Kate after last year's um, presentation by her and petition and everything. Um, she's since moved out of the city um, but there's a lot of names on that petition, and, and, and we're also thinking that with the Engage Birmingham, um, the item's been on the commission agenda twice, and it's on tonight. I think, you know, it, it, at least minimum, it could prompt some information from somebody that was involved in that. Um, but we'll reach out, even if I have to email Kate and find out who, who would be the next in line to communicate with. Um, we, we do intend to do that. Great, thanks. I think that's that's great because I think they had so many good ideas, and if they knew that we were strict, were recommending to restrict to ideas that didn't involve like unaccompanied children or safety issues, then then that would help them focus their recommendations. So, 
No, absolutely. We got to keep them all involved and updated. And um, as best we could do that, we will. We'll definitely try to figure that out too. Thanks, Pam. Um, Ellie, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, my biggest concern is safety of children in Maple Road. Um, and it, it seems like these women or these people that came to us about the park had small children. And they must have thought that there was going to be some kind of barrier um, between Maple Road and this park. So I guess my question would be, could it be done with a barrier that is not unsightly, like a big chain link fence that's up to the sky doesn't sound very appealing. But um, I'm sure you guys are creative in that way. But um, I, what was the other thing I was thinking? Um, Oh, that Maple Road there is 35 miles per hour now. And, and I'm trying to think of any of our parks. Most of them are about 20, they abut 25 mile an hour zones, except for Poppleton, which is right there. But nobody plays on that side, which is next to Woodward. Um, so I just was concerned about the kids. Thanks. Thanks, Ellie. Susan? Oh, I'm sorry. I think Pam covered it. I think um, I'm not about not saying no to the park, but getting back to them with some concerns about safety because we've already discussed that. But I like your idea, Heather, of a nice seating area, a respite. That's where a lot of people are riding their bikes. So, um, you know, I'm open to doing something with it, but something for little kids. I'm on that street all the time, and it's not a great place for kids. So thank you. Okay. Well, good. Well, then we will continue to engage, as we said, with the residents and hear more from staff and we'll keep trying to move, move something forward there. All right, let's 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 move on, Lauren. Sorry, we had a little fits and starts there on the CIP plan. <laughs> Backtracked yeah. a little. That's, uh, that's great. No, that's fine. So, yeah, we're, next item is item three, 2021-2022 um, uh, capital improvement plan. This is, these are pages out of the um, recommended budget that goes before the commission for approval either later this month or the first part of June. If we, the commissioners had their budget hearing, as you know, uh, or were made aware of anyway, um, on May 1st. And um, these pages identify what we, um, as the Department of Public Services, put in for um, park improvements, according, of course, now that we have the bond dollars um, available. Um, the first two items, if you look on the column on page 379, um, the 700,000 uh, Adams Park, that's what we had earmarked for that, what the board had earmarked, and then pickleball courts, uh, the 150,000, of which John mentioned, but that's also, too, what we designated um, for that as part of the bond. Um, and then on the second page, the, um, the 3.1, which is what we identified for the ice arena, actually... We are shifting that over to the 2021 because the, the general contractor award was already done this fiscal year. So that those dollars will be uh, put into this year's budget. So, um, cause those are already being expensed. So um, I just, we share this with the board every year around this time. So, so you know um, what's gonna be in the agenda for park improvements. Any questions? Right. All right, okay. we'll move on. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item on communications, uh, the Capital Projects Subcommittee uh, report. And we've had a great leader and scribe in that. I don't know if it's included in the packet, John. I don't know if we have to walk through it through, you know, extensively, but if there's anything you want to highlight from our last meeting. Sure. Susan? Sure. sure. Um, under ice arena construction, I think it's just to note for the for the board, um, uh, demolition is in progress, and the, the fencing. Um, at the time I wrote this, it was going to be erected on May sixth. I assume that it that uh, that it is that it has been. Um, it's going to enclose the entire front parking area as well as most of the back, and uh, but they've figured out a way to accommodate ball players entering on the east side. Uh, Carrie showed a few photos, and I, I don't know without, we didn't coordinate this, but I wonder if there's any chance that Carrie could share 
a couple of those photos with us now, or is that too complicated? Um, sure, or we can wait until the ice arena update, which we strategically placed right after oh. your report, Jeff. Oh, fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yes, okay. I do have some show some photos to show you, including the fence that was erected on Thursday. So, okay. would you like to jump to the pictures now? No, I'll just be a couple more minutes. On okay. Yeah. Then I'll be then I'll be off. I'll be uh, ready. Adam, yeah, pardon. Oh. I'll be ready. Uh, okay. Good. Um, Adams Park, uh, interesting update on that one. City staff met with representation representatives from the neighborhood associations, Birmingham Estates and South Poppleton. They're happy and excited. They had suggestions such as enlarging the play area in the southwest corner and reconfigure some of Roper School use on the north side. Uh, Roper School likes the plan and will participate with the cost. That's good news. Uh, Michael J. Dolan Associates will revise the concept plan and bring it back to the associations and Roper, then to us, the PNR board, by late summer. The city commission approval should take place in September or October, and then bidding, contractor selection, and construction could begin in May or June of next year. Um, Engage Birmingham, I think we already talked about that. Um, the one thing that I'd heard a lot of discussion about bang the table, bang the table, and then suddenly Engage Birmingham came up. It's one and the same thing. Just Engage, Engage Birmingham uses the bang the table software. Uh, pickleball, I don't think there's any point in uh, re-discussing that, although um, one of the thoughts that we had that didn't come up now in our discussion is um, when we think we have potential locations, we could we should consider posting some sort of public notice signage at the location with time for people to comment on it and so on. Um, and I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, John. All right. Well, now on to the fun stuff. Gary, you want to talk a little bit more about the next item, the Birmingham Ice uh, the Sports Arena construction update. Okay, we have some pictures. Um, it's been all about the demo since they started on April 26th. Um, this is a picture of what the mechanical room used to look like. And there it is as of yesterday. <laughs> so everything's gone. Um, locker room, pre construct they did a little bit of work there. Um, and then that is as of yesterday, um, the studio, just a little bit of work is happening in the studio. As we all know, we are not proceeding with the ice surface. However, we are going to be doing the addition to the studio and this is what's been done so far. I'll demo all the flooring has been removed. This is our main arena prior to any work um, other than having the ice taken out. So that's the concrete floor that you see there. Um, just if there's with the, um, the bleachers have been removed in this photo. Um, just some of the equipment that was in there. I thought that was a good picture. And so they're, they've saw cut all of the concrete flooring out and hauled it out of there. And so this is what it looks like as of yesterday. Um, like John mentioned, uh, the, this is the fencing schematic. Um, so the entire area is fenced in. There's screening along Lincoln, um, you know, the normal um, construction fence. And so we've got six foot chain link fence around the entire area. You can see the red line area. Access to the fields is here. So we have placed signage um, in front of these gates to direct people down to the east entrance of the parking lot and all the field access is coming in this way, which this sidewalk is open and will remain open. The only part that they need to fence off is when they're actually working in this section. Um, and that's where our new dehumidification system is going to be placed. 
like I mentioned and John mentioned, there's signage, um, you know, directing people to the fields. And that is, that's all the progress to date. Great. Thanks. Moving along. Any comments or questions? All right. We've talked a lot about this. <laughs> we will move on to the next item on the agenda, the Ice Arena Finance Report. Numbers look a little different this, this period, Lauren. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> That's going to be it for the arena. The, the arena closed <laughs> April 9th. So um, read, them, read them and weep, I guess. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah, it's... Uh, we're we're excited for the new the new season. Let me put it that way. So, All right. All right. okay, we'll move on. Um, so, I think the next items here are um, the Gage Birmingham, the press release on that. We talked a little bit about that, and we're glad that we're the first guinea pig of that, which is great. Um, any other comments on that? Engage. All right. We have then our Parks and Rec roster for information. And then some upcoming events, the Rouge River cleanup event on May 15th. Um, I haven't seen signs for that, but I have seen signs for the Court and Lake Garlic Pool on May 16th. So that will be a busy weekend next weekend. We did put signs at Booth Park and then also at um, Pine and... Uh, Lake Park for both. Oh, are there? Okay. Yep. I haven't seen those yet. And it was on Facebook, right. Twitter. Good. Excellent. Um, okay, the next item then. So if people are interested, they just, the information is on those signs, right? If they want to sign up. Yep. Nothing, the city's nothing. not facilitating any sort of sign up for that, are they? They just sign up at the site. Right. Okay. All right, the next item uh, item 11 is an email from correspondence um, that we've received from a resident uh, to the city manager. So it's good for us to be in the loop on that as it relates to different, you mentioned three different parks, a couple of parks in that communication. So thank you, Lauren, for sharing that. You're welcome. And the final item regarding some of our peers and neighboring communities, what they're doing. Um, I was telling Lauren, I actually drove by, my mom was very close to the Innovation Hills Park in Rochester Hills, and it is absolutely unbelievable what they are doing there. It's, um, I don't even know how many acres it is, but it is massive. It looks like there's a Walmart going in on the site. Um, but I think we can definitely learn and look to what other communities are doing. Um, uh, and we talked a little bit, too, about some of the funding there. Um, and what the city's been doing as it relates to some of the funding and opportunities for grants that I think was mentioned in not the Innovation Hills, but the, um, the McComb project. So any other comments from anyone else? Yeah, Lauren, did you want to mention that um, just on that note with, with grants, since it is cited in that article, just the history of the city. Cause I think Pam, you had touched on a little bit about where there are opportunities to maybe engage the, you know, crowdsourcing platforms or engage people more in our projects. And that the, the city has had a history of applying for grants. We have, I will, this is a good time to do it. Um, uh, also too, if you missed the, the Saturday uh, budget hearing, I sort of intro um, our, our budget, if you will, the department of public services, um, with a little perspective of, you know, what, what the past has been like and what I anticipate going forward, at least from our perspective, the Department of Public Services. And um, it's all about customer service and delivery and performance. And, and um, but most of all, I put in there of items of which we're, we're really going to focus on, of which uh, grants being one of them. And um, now that we have the, the, the means, if you will, um, for the, the with the parks and rec uh, bond dollars and and concept plans that are being redone or re-engaged, re uh, um, those are what you need to apply for grants. Uh, most often, if you, you know you can't apply if you don't have a match or money, 
and you, you can't submit anything without a, a concept plan or a design and good faith efforts that you're going to do something if you do get your grant. So, um, but historically, uh, Connie and Carrie uh, in, this, in this department, we've been real successful in getting forestry grants over the years um, uh, with the state and DTE energy. And um, we applied for a trail grant a few years back, well, several years back. Uh, we weren't successful, but, um, and then we did do, uh, we do intend to do possibly the crowdfunding or the placemaking or, and in 2019, Carrie and Connie applied for the Kaboom, which is another option. Um, for a piece, an art piece, or um, a structure that we could place outside of the ice arena. And we didn't get that one either, but we, we, we are and, and do keep tabs on this. Um, we're linked in really closely with the state and um, with various recreation groups too for grants and funding. Um, we are in the midst too of, of discussing uh, opportunities with uh, other consultants to help us do some grant writing. Um, if we could you know, we have Carrie, Connie, and myself, um, Parks and Rec, and, you know, we have a whole Department of Public Services, too. So if we could shatter ourselves into multiple pieces, we get a heck of a lot more done. But we do always uh, look to the experts to help us uh, be successful at writing grants. Um, so we are looking at that possibly for the trails or for playground. Um, so we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, and apprised of our progress and uh, um, possible opportunities for funding as they come available. So um, we're very excited about it. Um, so we definitely, so you know where we stand with that too. We take it very seriously and we, if we could capitalize on um, our, our dollars and um, get some opportunity for the community, we're, that's what we want to do, so. Thanks, Lauren. Background history is important. Thanks. Uh, Dominic, did, or somebody had a hand up. Pam, did you just? Are you, yeah, Pam. Um, I just wanted to, to mention, um, you, I don't know if it's like the writer of the, of the article that's attached, but they kind of make it sound like raising $50,000 by crowdfunding and having a $50,000 matching grant is like the be all end all. But as far as what I can tell that the city of Rochester Hills it, um, invested four million dollars in that park, mm. so fifty thousand dollars is nice. But uh, I don't, you know, whatever. You shouldn't just think, oh, all we have to do is crowdsource something, and we can have something like that Innovation Hills mm. playground because it's a totally different league, and it's nice to have. Right. Fifty thousand dollars would be a, a pretty big good dent in one of our projects, though. Yeah, there. That's right. Yeah. Lauren? I'm sorry. I don't want to interrupt with any, if anyone else has questions on this, but don't forget the trail subcommittee was going to do a little update at number 13. Oh, yeah. Um, I did forget. I could try. I just wrote three bullet points down and, and Ross could uh, add. But we met, Ross and I met on April 7th, I think, uh, to discuss the with staff to discuss the the trail committee. And for me, at least, it was an opportunity to learn about the priorities of the improvements, um, like improving the connectivity of the trails, um, improving the accessibility um, by adding some features that would allow, you know, that were accessible, not that the whole trails were accessible, and that improving the signs and maps um, to help users navigate the parks better and also as a way of publicizing the parks. Um, I learned about some of the limitations that we don't have. Um, there are protected wetlands or things that are, are out of our control. So you can't just go in and like add a path on both sides of the river. And I also learned about some, um, coordinated efforts, maybe between the Birmingham Museum or the Multimodal Transport Board or other people that are helping to improve the same space. So it was really um, an introductory meeting, or at least that's what I was able to get out of it to help to learn the, uh, the priorities um, that went into the preliminary budget and will help me understand and us to, to dig in a little bit deeper when there are 
some proposals and we could bring them back to to this uh, group. It was an inside meeting, a Zoom meeting, and I look forward to perhaps hiking the trails with um, Carrie or Lauren or Ross or any, all of them being more knowledgeable so we can, because we were kind of struggling over, is this the area or here's a picture or that kind of thing. But um, I expect there'll be um, improvements or, or we'll have more details to discuss soon. Yeah, the only, the only thing I could add to that is, uh, I think you summarized it properly, is we talked a lot about the history since I've been on this board for a long time, some of the things that's taken place in the past and discussions, uh, as well as some of the materials that have been used um, on some of the paths. But, that's great. Thank you both. Okay, any questions for Pam or Ross? If not, we will move on to unfinished business. All right, seeing or hearing none, any items of new business? Ian. Hi, I just wanted to share real quick. Um, I, I, uh, I talked to some people in the ice skating world about demand for learn to skate classes in the summer. Um, it doesn't all support my position, but I do want to share it all with you. Um, I talked to the director at Suburban Ice in Rochester, that's the onyx uh, of learn to skate, and he said that summer learn to skate classes went down to about a third of what they are at their winter peak. I spoke to someone at DSC who teaches in their learn to skate program. She said the same thing. It goes down to about a third. Um, I also spoke to uh, Jill who used to run our learn to skate program um, at Birmingham. And she was concerned that the um, learn to skate at Birmingham might be a little lower than other communities in the summer uh, because she felt that Birmingham kids were likely to do swim team and other summer activities other than other than skating. So I just wanted to share that. Um, I know we're not doing the studio renovation right now, but that was one of the concerns that popped up in the last meeting by me. Um, so just wanted to let you know. Yeah, and I will also thank you, Anne. I think that's that's helpful and important. I know um, that Susan and John and I in the capital uh, uh, project subcommittee have talked about kind of keeping that on our radar, you know, as we're looking at projects moving forward. So thank you for that information. Okay. We will move on to uh, the next item on the agenda. And this is open to the public for items that are not on the agenda. Any members of the public would like to present or mention anything to the board at this time? Okay. Seeing or hearing none, I think we are close to adjourning the meeting. Our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday, June 1st. And with that, we will say good night. Thank you, everyone. Great. Everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.